Hello, welcome to Election Brief with me, Kenneth Jesse. Over the next half hour, we bring you stories from across the political divide. Elections headquarters is brought to you by Petrosol, your clean fuel in full quantity, and the Chartered Institute of Management Accountant. Election headquarters for an informed electorate. Please stay. Hello again. The political atmosphere has started taking shape ahead of the 2024 general elections as all parties are racing ahead of time to conclude their reorganization process. While the major political players, NDC and MPP, are still on the hunt for running mates, smaller parties are still preparing to elect their national executives and flag bearers. A key participant in this electoral race is the All People's Congress, APC, which is entering the competition for the third time. Now, joining me in the studio is Hassan Ayaraga, who is the leader and founder of APC, for a conversation on the party's preparedness as they head to Congress later this week. Mr. Ayaraga, good to have you in the studio. Hi, Kenneth. How are you doing? I'm good. It's been a while. Yes, it has, yes, yes, definitely. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, um, let's start from the political... Uh, atmosphere for the past seven and a half years we've seen the new patriotic party take the worms of affairs how has it been uh, to be very honest um, one would say that it has been a difficult period for Ghanaians living in Ghana under the leadership of the MPP and we all know what is happening well, even though economic hardship is hard and they are blaming COVID-19 and the Russia Ukraine war but overall, there are certain things that we need to find out how it was being managed. Mm. The debt stock of 650 billion, the depreciation of the city, per capita income, the inflation, Ghanaians living under hard condition, okay, right. prices of goods and services increasing astronomically, and the suffering of many, many Ghanaians. So these are the situations we find ourselves. And we keep borrowing and borrowing and borrowing, and we have nothing to show. So for me, the problem has to do with the management of the economy, which I think that is not being managed well. I think Ghanaians have been taken for granted from NDC era, MPP era till date. Right. We are not seeing any future for Ghana. So what I see is that Ghana is lost. Oh, is it? Yes, Ghana is lost, and we need to define Ghana and find Ghana again. What a find out from you, if you were president today, yeah. during this era, yeah. what would you have done differently? I think that I would have tried to increase uh, productivity, manufacturing and industrialization, because that has been the drive for every economy. An economy to be able to stand on its feet must definitely have a production hub. So that you don't import more than you export. You need to export more than you import. And that will be able to stabilize your currency and give you an opportunity to grow your economy. And over the years, borrowing is not an option. For Ghanaians, borrowing is the last resort and the first resort. For me as president, borrowing will be the last option. I would have locked down Ghana, not because of COVID, it would have been an economic lockdown, where we now begin to produce what we consume and consume what we produce and build the status quo. Right now, you see, we're talking about graduate unemployment, job, unemployment, unemployment, unemployment. We would have done something different. We change the curricula of education to make our students and graduates more creative and innovative than being avoidable graduates. So there are a lot that we could have done. Mm. And I want to find out from you, uh, could you share with us APC's assessment of the current political climate in the lead up to the 2024 presidential and parliamentary elections? Presidential and parliamentary elections. Um, for me, I think that this year is going to be a very tough year because clearly we all admit, even the ruling government has admitted that they have failed. Have, now, they, have they admitted? Oh, yes. I mean, you listen to the president himself, Suna, his address. He said, blame me for the difficulties we are in. And secondly, we will rise again. What it means that we are down, we are completely down. That is an admission that we have failed. He doesn't need to tell you that, look, we have failed for you to understand. Once he said, blame me and don't blame my running mate. 
And the running mate also comes out to say, look, I was a mate. Not a running mate, but a driver's mate. And then I was just the economic advisor. But you don't advise your president on economic issues. And he failed. And then you said that you were not part of the mess. Then what kind of advice were you giving your president as an economic management team? That means that you failed in even advising the president. So clearly, both the president and his vice have admitted that we are in crisis mm. and the economy is down. Mm. So we don't need a suitor to come and tell us that the president said the economy is down. Right. <laughs> I can see you all clad in your, your party t-shirt yeah, and everything APC. from top to down. Let's talk about the APC. Yeah. As leader and founder of the party, what message do you have to electorates headed into your uh, third Congress and then subsequent elections as well? Yeah, I think that uh, over the years, right from 2012, when I went into the political arena, as a young man at age 39, 40, within that period till now, I've learned a lot. And I think I'm the right person to lead this country. And I'm calling on Ghanaians listening here and abroad and our party members that this is the right time to make a change. And that a change is a key to a new life. But when we keep recycling the NDC and the MPP, then we don't, we don't need a change and then we'll be where we are. Ayaga brings to the table a lot of economic, uh, what do you call it, uh, policies that will transform our Ghana and make an, econ an independent economy that will not have to borrow or beg. We should stop begging as a nation so I was going into 2024 election. I'm calling on Ghanaians. Those who think, many Ghanaians believe that where we are, there's no future anymore. But there's hope with Hassan Ayurga. There's hope with the APC. There's hope with a new leadership. We cannot continue to recycle and believe that we have hope. But once we make a change, definitely there'll be a new life. Right. So for me, Going to the 2024 elections, I think that Ghanaians should reconsider their decision not to stay home and say they won't go out and vote. Because I've spoken to a lot of Ghanaians, and their views are that they are not going to vote. They are not interested in anything called democracy at all. And I say, once you do that, you are part of the mess. You are part of contributing to the mess because you right. allow certain leaders who cannot manage our economy to get access mm -hmm. and to become our leaders. So forcefully, you have allowed them to become the leader you don't want to. So in order not to allow them to be the leader you don't want to, get out of your comfort zone, go to the polls, and vote against them, and vote for Hassan Erega. And the 2024 will be a different game altogether. Let's talk about some of the activities. We'll come to your relations with the Electric Commission, but uh, let's, let's talk about... Okay, let's, let's start with your relations with the Electric Commission. We understand that there were attempts to disqualify you sometime. What's your relations with the Electric Commission now? I, I always have the same relationship with the Electric Commission. Is it a good one? Following, following their rules, abiding by their regulations and their rules, and being a good citizen and a law-abiding citizen. It's just that in 2016, we had a very bad Electoral Commissioner who did not play by the rules and play by her own perception and emotions. And that was an anarchy for war, which we did not allow it to happen. Okay. We agree it to go because if you go to a program in London and then you say that they are going to be losers and definitely including Hassan Yarga, even before the game, and then you disqualify Hassan Yarga, automatically you prepared yourself that Hassan Yarga was not going to be part of my game. So as a referee, you don't make those decisions. You allow the situation to do that. But you have already disqualified Hassan Yaga even before he picked his form. So you can sit down and say, there are going to be many losers. And definitely you single out Hassan Yaga and add to it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, it's a game. So right now we have Charlotte, um, Madame Jean, Jean Mensa. And I think she's played so well in making sure that all political parties abide by the rules. You saw that she disqualified 17 political parties last year. And then this year, I even called her last week, and I was of the view that, for me, there's a challenge here. Okay. And the challenge is that you and your commission are on the political parties. 
Act 2575 about political parties regulations. And then you say all political parties must have offices, one third of the district offices, before their candidates, their presidential candidate will be qualified to become president, a presidential candidate. Now let's look at the other side. You also have on this side, independent presidential candidate who now comes without an office, mm. without any movement, without an organization, and they are allowed to just walk in and become presidential candidate. There's something wrong with our laws. Right. And I think that we need to look at this very well. Because if an independent candidate feel, can easily become a presidential candidate, and a political party must now go through a lot of difficulties in becoming a presidential candidate, it doesn't make sense. So we should also find a way of saying that all independent candidates must also have two thirds of offices. Okay. Because we are running the same position, for the same position. You cannot put the rules for me and then for my counterpart. You say no rules. But Mr. Hassan Ayaga, to be fair to them, the, an independent candidate is way different from a party. For example, a party runs all the time. Independent candidates, you know, they appear during election periods and then you don't see them again. So why should they so, be treated the same so, way? So that is why they should not even be given soft hand gloves because they have no structures, but they are allowed to just become a candidate. It, doesn't, it shouldn't be that way. The rule must apply to every person who is running for president. It shouldn't have, because you want to be independent candidate, then everybody will stop organizing a party and become an independent presidential candidate. It's easy. That's why this, this year round, you're going to have a lot of independent candidates. You know why? It's the easiest way to become, I'm a movement. Right. I'm a leader of a movement. I'm a leader of a, a force. So it's easy for me to walk and now be raising my hands and calling myself an independent candidate. And the media gives you a lot of coverage. The we who runs with the proper structures of 275 offices, with party executives in constituencies, police station, and regional level, we are then not given coverage. Mm. Because we have to become a candidate right. before we are given coverage. But now, all the independent candidates in Ghana have been given coverage. The media follow them when they visit the constituent, the media did. It's not fair. Okay. It's, it's not about me. It's about the regulations. Mm -hmm. It's about the law. It's about what we should run for. Right. It's, for instance, your, your media house. Your media house is a very big media house with structures. Yes. Then somebody goes to sit on radio and, uh, and then they pick up, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you call it uh, online TV. Call it Hassan Erga TV. And he's on social media and doing it. And then all of you should be given equal opportunity when it comes to NCA. Okay, uh, we've settled on that. Let's talk about the calendar. There's been concerns that the EC has delayed in releasing calendars. Although yesterday the MPP and NDC did confirm to have cited a calendar purported to be from the Electric Commission. What do you think about that? I, I was in Kumasi yesterday. I got in this morning. I saw the calendar was called to, I mean, comment on it. And I told them that I don't, if I look at the calendar, if this really coming from the EC, then should, there should be a statement from Jean Mensa publicly making an announcement that this is the calendar or her deputies. I've not heard that. I don't know whether they've done that. I've not heard that. So if somebody is circulating, this is just perception. This, um, I will not... I would, not, I would not buy it. Because when I studied the calendar, I saw a lot of lapses. And I said, no, there's no way you say 56 days you're going to use to do exercise. And within the 56 days, you say you're going to do election. Mm. It doesn't make sense to me. Right. Because you don't give days for exercise. And then you say, within the period I'm having that exercise, I'm having elections. Mm. Well, the Electoral Commission has not come out to officially confirm. That's where I realized that there's something wrong with it, and this is not coming from the Electoral Commission. And do you think they've delayed in releasing the official calendar? We are in March, almost in March. I mean, first week of March, and then we have, let's say, nine months to go. I think they've delayed a bit. Okay. Because they had last year to work on all that and to be able to meet with political parties to find a way of dealing with it. When they brought in the issue of the changing the dates from 7th of November, December to 7th of November, they should have included all these decisions so that we, as a political party, IPAC member, we discuss it 
And then by now, we all know where we are. Mm. But nine months to election. Speaking of, speaking of IPAC, they're having a meeting on Thursday. Will you be there? I won't be there. I don't, go to, I don't attend IPAC meeting. Why? My party does. Why? Because my, I have leadership. I have okay. the general secretary, I have the youth organizer, I have women's organizer. They go and attend those parties. And mm. then if it is necessary for me to go, I'll be there. But when it becomes tough, that's when I go there. Mm. When there are issues that I think that we have to appear before the commissioner mm. and then deal with it. Then you see me go there. Mm. I'm obviously uh, not referring to you as a person. I'm referring to your party, APC. So We are always represented. Yes, your representatives. Okay. What concerns are they seeking to be addressed at the IPAC meeting on Thursday? Good. There are a lot of, a lot of concerns that we've put on table for them to look into it and see how we can look into that. The matter of the voter register, the matter of the limited registration exercise, and the matter of the issue of minor in our register. It has become a very serious topic that we all have to deal with it. There's been is issue of minor coming from both sides, the NDC and the MPP, bulldozing their ways through and making sure they register minor. And that is why the APC policy of, an all in, uh, of a national data system is paramount and very important. Because a national data system allows the system to be able to have check and balances. Nobody can just come with an ID or identification, identification and say I'm 18 when the person is not 18. The system will even invite you when you become a register to go and be, pick up your voter register. Mm. Let's talk about the anti-LGBTQ bill which has been passed by parliament. I mean, you even did indicate that the economy seems to be suffering, but it appears that there are threats from external creditors and uh, from the international community about the human rights violations in that bill and so on and so forth, which sort of puts a lot of pressure on President Akufuado whether to assent to it or not. If you were to be in that position, what would you have done? <laughs> Pardon me. I think that we need to know where we are coming from and where we are going as a country. As president, we, have, we are coming as, as an individual person. I believe in traditions. I believe in our rule of law. And I believe in the religious background. We come from various religious backgrounds. And our religion does not permit us to have same sex. My religion does not permit me to have same sex. It's taboo. I guess your religion too. The point here is that are we going to sit down as usual because we are beggars and allow certain group of people to impose their laws and their regulations to us and access to accept it and ignore their own. Why, why do we have to marry same sex? I mean, it's not easy to go to the US and say, I want to marry three wives. You're not allowed. Will they accept that we have said Ghanaians who have a tradition of marrying two, three wives, marry two, three wives? If they will accept that, we will also listen to them. But Ghanaians and the president of the Republic of Ghana should know that our, even our uh, constitution doesn't allow same sex. Mm. There is nowhere in the constitution that allows same sex. So whether internal force, external force, <laughs> whichever country, I will tell you, I won't use that word, but you go back to your country and deal with your matter. Our as president will not allow that. Mm. And uh, the issue has now moved from being a religious uh, argument to a legal argument because even uh, when President Akufuad commented on it for the first time yesterday, he didn't mm -hmm. mention that mm -hmm. someone has sent it to court mm -hmm. and is waiting for the outcome of the Supreme Court before mm -hmm. considering whether to assent to the bill or not. So it has now shifted from the religious aspect of it to legal and human rights matters. Legal and religious aspect are all the same. We use the religious traditional background to build on our legal framework in Africa. We don't just sit down and say legally you can do AB. Our constitution is a legal document and it's bind by all of us to follow. Whether you go to court, you can go to the court of Hagen, we don't really care. But we have a constitution that we all follow and that is what we are going to abide by. So if they can bring one million lawyers into this country. The, I know them. I've worked, I've worked with a lot of them in Germany when I used to have my, my restaurants in Germany. I lived in a community called Cologne. And all these gays and uh, these uh, homosexuals, they were all living in, in that community. So I know how they operate. They have a lot of money. They can influence a lot of things. They do a whole lot of things. But we cannot accept this kind of norms. 
They can build another country and move there. Mm. You, you, you've mentioned that as president, you never sent to Never, back. never. What would be your advice to President Kufuado? I think that you should just let them pass the bill and let's move on as a country. We have more issues like economic The, the bill has been passed. It's yeah. only left with President Kufuado to assess. So that's what I'm saying. You should sign it and let it, let it be done. Let it, be, it become a law. Despite all the economic, likely economic implications. What are you talking about? We're, we're likely to face. Will you marry a dog? Because you are in an economic situation. Will you? Come on, let's be sincere. Will you marry a goat? This is what they are telling you to do. Marry a goat, marry a dog, eh? marry an animal, and live with the animal. That's the point. And I don't think that anybody in his right senses will make such. I mean, with all the beautiful, sorry, with all the beautiful ladies on earth, why should I marry a man? Why? Tell me, what am I going to produce? Can you become pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> if you become if you can become pregnant, why, why not? <laughs> so this 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 matter, let us not be hypocritical. Believe me, let us not look at the, the benefits or the evil things that comes from it and they are imposing. They are using we can they go listen to me, very simple shot. Can the European Whichever, let me not limit it to a particular institution. Can the society LGBT go to Saudi Arabia and detect that to them? Can they do that? Because Saudi Arabians are not beggars. They have what it takes to build their country. Can they do that in Kuwait? No. Can they do that in Dubai? No. Because they are rich. It is the poor ones, we. Because we are so poor, they are imposing this nonsense on us. And if the president should accept this, <laughs> uh, well, it will be mm. mm. Let's talk a bit about APC now. You have uh, some activities lined up. Tell us a bit about it. Yeah, this is an interesting Congress coming up on the 9th of March, which is this coming Saturday. We're going to have our Congress in Kumasi. Right. And we're going to have a walk and a flute as well as a carnival. What we intend to do is that on the, sieve of, on the 9th of March, Around 6 a.m., we're all going to gather at Ababu Post Office in the Chantu region in Kumasi with all the members of the party and the groups, people coming from all walks of life, from various constituencies, various right. regions. we all gather there. Then we start the work. Is there any special reason why you chose the Ashanti region? Not really. I mean, Ashanti region is part of Ghana, and I can make any congress anywhere in this country. But I think that I wanted just to have it in the Shanti region this time because our first one, we did it here in Greater Accra. Okay. So there's no need to do it again in Greater Accra. So we intend to do the congress there. And then launching of the campaign, we do it in Northern region. And then manifesto probably Western region. We want to change the regions and make sure that the party is visible in all the regions, very visible. So the work will start at 6 a.m. By 10 a.m. we are done working. Then we meet at the congress ground where we now start the Congress activities from the, the same day. And then after the Congress, then we now have a carnival, where we now have dancing, music, and then we, 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 ride, we ride around in town, drive around in town. It's going to be an interesting, mm. interesting activity. You should, you should be there. You should be there. Try and, try and make it up. Uh, so, I mean, so, so what are you going to disclose your running mate? After the Congress. Okay. And we might be picking a running mate from the Ashanti too as well. Ooh, are, are you going to choose a male or a female? Ah, uh, a matter of choice. The party make that decision with me. If we present those who are supposed to be presented, we put them before the party. We look at their, their weight, their weight, and their various um, uh, opinions and whatever they bring on board. Then we choose the one we need to. But what is important is that we will need a running mate that will add up value to building Ghana. Mm. Not just a running mate because he's coming from the south, he's coming from the north, or he's coming, I'm not going to pick that, but we're looking for a running mate that will add value to Ghana's economic benefits. Mm. All right, so Mr. Hassan Yariga is the leader and founder of the All People's Congress. Thank you very much Thank you too. for passing through this afternoon. So, what will inform your choice in the voting booth on December 7th? Well, let's go to the University of Cape Coast for today's Voters' Voices. We as the youth, we are considering the economy. So we are going to look at the economy as a whole, especially we students that we are in our final year. We are expecting 
um, a candidate who will be able to give us the assurance that when we are out of school, we will be able to get something doing. Because we don't want a situation whereby you tell us that when we are, we are out of school, we should go into entrepreneurship. The question is, what money are we going to use for the entrepreneurship? Are they going to offer the money to us that we'll be using for the entrepreneurship or not? Because if that's the case, then I think there's no need coming to school to spend all these years year. So we are looking at the economy. They should have a system or they should have their plan that will factor with the youth. Because we, the youth, are the nation now. And then is going to have a direct impact on us. So that's what I can say for now. So we want to see some changes. Like they should prove beyond explanation. They should prove beyond words. That's what you're expecting from them. Actually, so far what I've heard, it's more like they are trying to find a way of maybe throwing the other party out of the way so they can vote for them. What they are bringing out currently, if I'll be frank, they are not emphasizing on the needs of we, the individual, okay? They are just trying to criticize each other, and I think it's not really that. Um, me, I would say like they should have good and fusible policies. When they come into the system, they shouldn't just bring any policy that it seems fit for them and it's rather bring implications on us. That's one factor. The educational policies with the secondary sector is okay, but if, like, which is the feeding, which they are, they are having a problem with right now, if it's also like they can bring up a solution which will fix it permanently, instead of maybe they'll bring the feeding system is now like one, they'd only bring bag of beans and they'll eat throughout the week. They also like, the nutrition are not enough for them, so the educational policy is like, that one, I can't say I'm happy for sure for the, this one. Okay, wait. This year, 2024, uh, um, I expect proven results. Yes, results the government has given to this country. That's the only thing that would influence my vote. And looking at how the country is being run right now, certain things has been done, which I reserve to mention them. And we are looking out for more. We are looking out for more because the ordinary Ghanaian want to have a feel of the government where their issues are addressed and served, but not just sent, but there is no admission to that result. That's all for election brief this afternoon. My name is Kenneth Jesse. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.